lot of people are inspired by your videos to to start playing the harmonica or maybe to get into it more seriously or get into blues music more. Mm -hmm. What would be perhaps your three biggest tips for someone interested in playing blues harmonica? Uh, number one would be make sure that you start with uh, what I'd call a professional grade instrument, professional class instrument. Doesn't have to be uh, fancy. It doesn't ha absolutely should not be a custom harp. I would say don't start with one of those. So don't spend a hundred in U.S. you know a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars. Um, I started now. I'm I'm an, I'll uh, give you an advisory. I'm an official endorser for Honer, but that's partly because for 42 years since I started, I've been playing uh, the Honer Marine Band. I'm not saying you'd have to play the Honer Marine Band. Honer's uh, but you know Honer, Seidel, Suzuki. Um, uh, Lee Oscar, there, there's a sort of hand, and there's a, a handful of, of good brands, you know, mm -hmm. five to five to seven good brands. I say start with a, a good harmonica, start with a good professional grade. Don't try to cheap it out right right away because you'll develop bad habits right away. Don't start with a two dollar harp. Mm -hmm. um, if that's what gets you interested, that's fine. <laughs> if somebody gives you one mm -hmm. uh, that's sort of a, a giveaway harp yeah. kind of thing, but don't don't start that. So that's number one. Number two. You can only, if you really want to learn blues, you can only learn blues um, by listening to good blues harmonica music. So, now this is a place I'll make a pitch for my own website, modernbluesharmonica.com, because we do have a, we have a frequently asked questions page, and we have a page where I have like top 10 all-time list. Mm -hmm. And that, I, I'm going to suggest that that's a good place to go to get a sense of what, uh, a lot of professionals might agree is a group. I have 10, sort of top 10, and then second 10, and then a bunch of honorable mentions. So I think you need to sort of go out and, and spend some money on music. Or if you're a streamer, you know, if you don't want to buy MP3s. So those are two things. They're not obvious, but the instrument and really listening to good music. Because part of learning how to play is you're actually trying to imitate. It's like if I want to learn French, is it better for me to go and buy a, a book about how to speak French or to go to Paris? Yeah. Well, I'm going to hear a whole lot more French spoken really well in Paris, and I'm going to start with this idea that there's this great accent. So, so if you want that blues... <laughs> no, just a little bit of that speaks volumes, right? So think of blues as, as a country you have, to, you have to go to in a way. Yeah, with natives that you need to pay attention to and learn from. Um, and... Number three, okay, so those are two sort of maybe non-obvious things, but they should be obvious that you need to get the instrument and, and the music. Um, and then I think, what's the next step? <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I start with, what are three tips? Single notes, double stops, chords. Start with the most basic things that you absolutely have to learn. Learn how to play one good, strong, solid Start with a scale. And make it so you can get single notes, move cleanly side to side, in and out, instead of... You know, that's messy, right? So you want to go from messy to clean. Double stops, learn how to play two notes at a time. Make them sound good. Get good embouchure, learn how to play that two-hole draw, which is the most important note when we're talking about blues. It's the sort of home place. Not. So can, ask. Can I interrupt? And yeah, say, please can, do. can you say definitively for for all my subscribers? Oh. I get so many people saying there's a problem with my two draw. There's never a problem with the two draw, okay? And I can't tell you how many times I've gone. I said, "You think there's a problem? Give me your harp. I'll yeah. take it. I'll wipe it off, and I'll go." And they'll, you know, there's not a problem. What I will say is I've discovered that a C, although C is the sort of one that people start with, sometimes people have trouble, especially with that two draw on a C. Mm. But if you go to a D, or an E or an F, but I mean especially D, you're just moving up one key. Sometimes the problem goes away. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage people to get a couple of harps. Um, but single notes, double stops, and then chords. When I'm doing a sort of beginner's class, um, I, I say, okay, and then we need to do, do the chord. Sound out hole one, sound out hole two, sound out three. First chord, one, two, three, draw. Make it sound good. You don't want... And I give people tips for how your lips have to be fat. Embouchure is really important, the particular shape, and you don't want it to fall away from your lips. 
and you want to have a good sound. And then, and then learning how to go in and out, breathe in, breathe out, and then how to go ta ta ta, go ta ta by pulling air in, go ta ta by going out. Or single notes, double stops, chords. Once you got that, your your foot's actually in the door at mm -hmm. that point, and your and your well, all that's left is bending. But that's another question. <laughs> but yeah, so for beginners, I would say get those three things, work on those three things. A little warbling. I tell people sort of instant harp has some warbling in it. Do you always move the harp rather? Than I that? always move the harp. I know some people shake their head, um, or some people do a little bit of both. I always just move the harp, and I and I kind of, <laughs> I go back and forth with yeah. wrists. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wrist. Yeah, wrist. Oh, kind of wristed. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So I'm actually doing it from the wrist, not the arms. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a nice. secret. That's Nobody's nice. noticed that. Oh. I never, I never pointed that <laughs> it's out. It's out. It's out <laughs> that, now. That's kind of smooth. The wrists. That. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. And of course, I'm playing in this case with. A grip that's a, a sort of the, the not the most popular, but the next most popular, mm -hmm. which is the two hands together. So, um, um, but you could do it like this. Also, a very common grip. Here's one mistake that I mm -hmm. think people make. I, I'm a stickler for this. Um, when you hold the harp like this, if this is going to be your method, I've seen some people who say top finger. I've seen instruction books that have that have that kind of look. Right, mm -hmm. that have the top one all the way across and the thumb back, and I don't like that at all. I'll tell you why? Because it it locks your it locks your wrist. It's very hard to bend. It just doesn't feel natural to bend. The moment you get your these two fingers like equidistant and put it straight in, mm -hmm. it, it it automatically goes in a, in, a, in the right angle. It automatically mm -hmm. feels comfortable. So I would say beginners pay attention if if to, when you hold it. I don't obsess about it, but but try to make them equal. So don't kind of overextend the. Don't overextend that index on top. Yeah. yeah. And I've seen instruction books that that show that. Yeah. I think Honer, well, even Honer's little fold out thing in the in the Marine Band may even show yeah. that. It's like no, that's not right. You need to rewrite it. I need to rewrite it. <laughs> Tell them.